Hi friend, Potato here. Last month I made a few statements that revolved around my German learning goals. And to be honest, I even surprised myself by how little I have achieved. As you can see, I still haven't finished section 2 of my A1 German Duolingo and by my previous calculations, I'm supposed to be doing A2 now. And as you can also see from my journal, I have good days where I study for over an hour and then bad days. Today, I'm going to share with you how to get out of a constant loop of not achieving your weekly goals and feeling like you are not doing enough by creating actually attainable and realistic goals. I won't be talking about smart framework, don't worry. Indeed, let's call them honest goals instead. And at the end of the video, I wanted to touch on creating long-lasting habits that will help you with your language studies and other aspects of your life. The current state of affairs is that we are in the middle of March and it's likely that you've set some major goals in the beginning of the year and then following the best advice online, broke it down into smaller bits and pieces. You probably also make a new plan every month, every week, but life keeps getting in the way and you find yourself not achieving any and feel frustrated that you are not learning fast enough. I know, I'm the same. And it sucks, especially when the videos of people who learned the language in three months keep popping up on your For You page. Let's figure out how to best set up goals for our journey without looking at anyone else's. Even though we might not have the best habits or discipline right now, or even just a busy life with loads of responsibilities. Don't be scared if your new goals won't align with the goals you set at the beginning of the year. There is no need to follow or chase something that hasn't been working for you. The first step to setting great goals is not setting goals at all. We are going to do some research. I have no doubt that you have some kind of idea of what you want to be, but there is a great chance that you do not know enough of what you are right now. I can imagine you telling yourself that you want to spend two hours every day after work studying Korean. But are you the person who truly has two hours to spare? If X is what you are now and Y is what you want to become, and you already know the value of Y, you need to know the value of X to find out what you are missing to get to the Y. To find out the value of X, we need to do some digging. And no, you don't have to sit down right now and define yourself. Although, if you want, you can do a situational analysis in regards to your language learning. It is called SWOT, but it is totally up to you. For the next month, you are going to do some research to find out who you are. You can do it very deeply or on a surface level, it just will depend on how much time you have and how ready you are to turn this into a habit. You will need a journal or a random notebook that you will use for the next three months. Or if you're a digital person, you can do it in Excel or whatever. At a very surface level, you will spend the next 30 days. Yes, I'm saying 30 days because don't you dare waiting for the Monday or the beginning of the next month to do it. Do it now. Anyways. Um, what was I on about? Oh, yeah. You will spend the next 30 days recording or journaling your study habits that are 1. How many hours a day you spend studying your target language, which is up to you what to include in there. For instance, I include reading manga but not watching anime. 2. The resources you are most drawn to using. 3. How long does it take for you to complete a task, like a chapter in a grammar book. And four, how much you have accomplished. Like on the day one, you started this book on chapter two, and now after 30 days, you're on chapter five. If you want to dig deeper into your learning habits, consider recording what days of the week you tend to study more, what time of the day you feel most motivated, your overall mood, how long you can actually concentrate for on a task, does the weather or your menstrual cycle influence your productivity? And I'm going to leave many other ideas on the screen for you. You have to do this for at least a month to get an idea of your habit. A week is too short. You might have an amazing week or a bad week. After a month, you will roughly know how much you can dedicate to studying on average per month, per week or per day. Try not setting any goals for yourself in the next 30 days. And if you really need to, think more guidelines than goals. Like, I need to prioritize listening and writing this month. Something like that. Now, you have a rough understanding of how much time you are able to dedicate to studying, 
how many hours each task takes and what resources you prefer to use. This month we are going to set up some soft goals. Depending how you like to measure your progress, you will have three sets of goals. One for a bad month, two for an average month and three for a good month. If you're planning to set your goals in hours you spend with your target language and on the last month you manage to spend 30 hours, for an average month goal you will put 30 hours, for a bad month you will put 30% less, that is 21 hours or 20, and for a good month 30% more, which is 39 hours or 40. If you like to make written chapters of a book or units of a course, again, do the same. Let's say you've done 5 chapters this month, so your average month goal is 5 chapters, your bad month goal will be 3.5 or 3 chapters, and your good month goal will be 6.5 or 7 chapters. Make sure to keep an average time that it took you to complete each chapter last month in mind. And before you jump into the next month, look at your resources. Maybe there are some book or an app or whatever that you didn't like or avoided using last month. Ask yourself whether this resource is truly necessary for your learning. Is it a text preparation book that you must follow? Or is it a random textbook you bought because it was recommended by someone and now you feel obligated to use it as you spend money on it? With money, sometimes we need to take an L and move on. And forget about a resource that doesn't add value to our language learning. Your goal for the second month is to keep track of your habits the same way you did in the first month while keeping the soft goals in your mind. You should also track your feelings a bit more in regards to your soft goals. Do they frustrate you? Do they make your study not enjoyable? Are they too easy? Do they motivate you? Etc. See where you stand with these soft goals while you're studying during the second month. After two months of research, you should have a solid understanding of your study habits. So let's set goals based on your research for the next 30 days. They can be daily, weekly or monthly. Personally, I prefer monthly goals as it gives me more flexibility and I can take advantage of my good days and cover up for my bad days. Also, consider if you want to keep setting goals based on how much material you cover each month or how much time you spend. You can stick with setting three types of goals, bad, average and good, or just set one goal that you think will be perfect for you, whether it's challenging or just perfect fit. Spend this month journaling again and hopefully by the end everything works out for you and your goals and habits align. I know, you probably can't be asked to spend three months figuring out yourself. Sure, but you're not wasting your time in these three months, you're still learning, and again, once you figure out your study habits, you can use it forever to set your goals, obviously with some adjustments based on your life circumstances. However, if you absolutely hate the idea of observing yourself, especially for three months, here are some things you should consider about goals, habits and language learning in general in order to set your goals within a week or even tonight. First, make your goals broader and take advantage of your good days. Rather than trying to do one chapter a week, do four chapters in a month. Two, do not rush into setting higher goals just because you managed to do everything you ever wanted and more today. It is easy to get carried away by success of one day, but your honest goals should never be based on your good day. Indeed, if you do not want to be gloomed by disappointment, rather than basing your goals on a good day, base them on a bit above worst day and then you should have no difficulty achieving them. Free? It's not a habit unless you can do it for 21 days. Unless you already have been studying for 21 days the same amount of time, for instance an hour, you cannot consider it a habit and base your goals on it. 4. This is life, things take time. Every time you see a university student without any responsibility besides studying, being able to study 12 hours a day, do not despair and focus on your own journey. I actually don't know when we as a society decided that language proficiency takes a year or even less. If this shit was that easy, so many more of us would be able to speak 4-5 to five languages. Indeed, when I look back at school in Russia and then in Italy, native speakers spent at least 9 years of school perfecting the language they are constantly immersed in and also spent 6 years previously listening and practicing as kids. And sometimes 
they still suck at it. How can you expect yourself as a fully employed adult to become fluent in a language in three months? 5. There is no need to create a detailed study plan if you never follow it. 6. Goals can be great to keep you on track and sometimes create a sense of urgency. But unless you have an exam to pass or a qualification to gain, truly enjoy the journey and do not rush it. 7. If you keep creating goals and then not achieving them, you probably spend too much time planning and not enough time implementing them. Maybe your goal setting is actually overwhelming you. See how capable you are of studying for a week without setting any goals. 8. If you are at school or moving countries and absolutely have to learn a language that you do not like or your body refuses to learn, try finding beauty within it, through the culture, people or even memes. Use fun resources and check out my video about learning languages when you suck at it. 9. Limit your resources to 3 to 4 per week or month. If you are like me, you have 10 plus resources per language and are confident that you have to use every single one of them, almost every day. You are probably overwhelming yourself and have a sense of FOMO. So restrict yourself to focusing on 3 to 4 resources per week, or better, per month. Humans are creatures of habits, don't you agree? To be able to achieve our goals, we need to have relevant habits implemented whether they help us study better or help us create an environment with extra time for studying. Maybe it is your first year of learning a new language, so you need to change your daily routine and habits to accommodate your new hobby. You probably have already noticed that I am a creature of emotion and motivational bursts. So good habits, discipline and concentration are not the most relevant things in my life, but they probably should be. And although I do believe in survival of the fittest now and then, ignoring that different people can benefit from different approach to any given task is quite... Mm, bland? Yeah, your brain is bland if you don't think so. Unseasoned. Underwhelming. I do not think that your ancestors will feel too upset, indeed I don't think they will feel anything because at 1am you felt a lot of motivation to change your life and you wrote down a plan for the next day of your shiny new life just to wake up and spend all days battling your normal routine to try to be a better person. You might have even succeeded at making radical changes for 3 days of waking up at 4 a.m. and taking an ice-cold shower and doing other things that bold men on YouTube tell you are essential to be successful. How was it? Were you happy? Did you feel better about yourself? I'm not saying that we can't change and should accept our state and never progress. I'm just saying let's do it mindfully. Let's do it Kaizen way. Kaizen? Kaizen? Let's do it Kaizen way. The Japanese word Kaizen means betterment or improvement, and if you do one Google search, you will find that it is usually refers to a business philosophy that is based on continuous yet gradual improvement. And this concept can be applied to any aspects of your life, not only business, with you bettering yourself little by little rather than doing dramatic changes at once. Basically, rather than you going to run a marathon tomorrow, you will start by running 100 meters. Or even better, just putting on your running shoes and calling it a day. The point is to create a long-lasting change and that takes time. You must be patient. Like, very patient. Whatever your life is right now, it is made out of small and big habits, routines or rituals. And your existence will fight with all its might if you decide to make drastic changes. But if you do small improvements and habit substitutions gradually, you have a better chance of eventually achieving your goal. So let's do it! I already said that good habits don't only help you do things you want better, but also they help you get things you don't like done more efficiently. There are probably 100 things you want to change or do, write them all down. And next to each of them, write down where you are right now. For instance, you want to wake up every day at 6, next to it, write down when you do wake up now. And then, next to those, write the tiniest step you can do to achieve it. 
Now you're going to choose between one and four things for this month. They should not be from the same category, like don't choose two goals that are about sleep or two goals about sport. You are going to do one and only one thing for the next seven days. And if you manage to do it every day for the next seven days, you can add the next thing. After being successful for a month with a task, you can develop it more. For example, you wake up five minutes earlier for a month. Next month, you can wake up 10 minutes earlier. These changes can seem laughable and insignificant, and after a few days of success, you'll want to rush into a next new thing. Don't. We are not trying to break ourselves and then rebuild. We are trying to create tiny new good habits that will gradually squeeze out not so good and even harmful habits that we have been living with for the past many years. Just to give you a bit more examples, here is what I've been up to for the past month. First of all, I decided to fix my sleeping schedule and now I wake up every day at 8.30. If I snooze, I lose. And next month, I'm going to start waking up at 8. Secondly, I decided to fix my morning and my night routine because I think they take too long. And the first thing I decided to tackle was the time I spend in the shower. Next month, I'm going to tackle other aspects of my night routine. And the last thing is I'm trying to work out more. Actually, I'm just trying to start working out. So I'm doing those tiny 10 minute workouts a day and we're going to see how long that lasts. I hope you got an idea of this gradual habit creation, but if you want, I would love to make a full video about changing habits. Anyways, thank you for sticking with me until the end. Leave a like, subscribe, and let me know what a tiny new habit you are going to start tomorrow. Bye!